Lake like Valley. The title of this message is The Proud and the Damned. We're going to go to Genesis 1 1, Genesis 1 and 2, then we're going to go to Isaiah 14, Ezekiel 28, and then Matthew 23. And also, we're going to skip over to the fourth chapter of the book of Genesis, also. The Proud and the Damned. God created man, he created spirits, he created angels, all with volition. Now, I am not Armenian at all in theology. I'm Calvinist. I believe in the security of the believer. And I am not supralapsarian nor infralapsarian, but modified sublapsarian in my thinking. And the Bible made me that way. Now, I want us to go to Genesis 1 and 1. It says, Barashith bara Elohim et Hashemayim Haaretz. We haaretz. Hatia tohu wabohu. We hoshep el panei hamayim. We ruah Elohim meripacheth el panei hamayim. Now, translated that says, in beginnings. In beginnings. Barashith means in beginnings, plural. In one of the beginnings, way back over here, in eternity past, on our little timesheet, God created angels and spirits. And he also created the heavens and the earth in eternity past. The heavens and the earth was not, were not created in space and time as we know it. It was created in eternity past. Now, it says in the earth, she had become formless and void, and darkness covered over the faces of the deep. And then it says, Spirit God, Ruah Elohim, Meripacheth, kept on mourning over the faces of the deep, the faces of the waters. God created all things in his image in some ways. He created everything related to him. He is going to redeem it back to himself through the person of Jesus Christ. In Genesis, the fourth chapter, we have a story of a child being born. It says that, uh, that Eve had a relationship with Adam and that she brought forth a son. And she said, I have gotten a man, even Jehovah. She thought he was the Messiah. Now we know that Cain, Cain means gotten. And she thought that she had gotten Messiah from Genesis 3.15. But the first child was a very big disappointment. He murdered. He was the first murderer. He was a liar. He was a chief. He was a thief. He was the first person to invent slavery. Now, in Isaiah 14, we go way back in eternity past now. We find out rebellion is not new with God. He created his creatures so they would have volition so he could be worshipped by them. If you create robots, robots only do what you say. But if you have volition, God said in Genesis 1.26, let us create man, let us make man in our spiritual likeness, ruach, in our blood flowing likeness, in the likeness of God the Son as he would become. And in our sovereign likeness, that man would have sovereignty like God does. God is sovereign. He can do whatever he wants to. Now, in Isaiah 14, chapter, verse, starting with verse number 12, it says, How are you fallen from heaven, O light bringer? Now, this word here comes from, uh, we have Lucifer in our King James Version. It comes from the Latin Vulgate. Uh, Lucifer comes from the Latin word lucere, which means to shine or to a light carrier. The name Lucifer and Luke, are the, and Luke is a shortened form of Lucifer, so anyone named Luke is actually Lucifer. Now Lucifer is not a bad name, but Lucifer as a person, as an angel, as a cherub, as an archangel, as many theologians believe, rebelled against God. Now let's read the story. How are you cut down to ground? You have weakened and laid prostrate the nations. O oh, blasphemous satanic king. And you said in your heart, I will ascend to heaven and I exalt my throne above the stars of heaven. The proud and the damned. I'm going to tell you something. Satan was not created damned. 
People are not created damned. They damn themselves. I will set upon the mount of the assembly in the uttermost north. If you want to know where heaven is, that's where it is. The north is part of the earth and then go straight up into the third heaven. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds and I will make myself like the most high. Elohinu, the most high God. And yet I shall be brought down to Sheol, Hades, to the inmost recesses of the pit, the region of the dead, and those who see you will gaze at you and consider you, saying, Is this the man who made the earth to tremble and who shook the kingdom, who made the world like a tohu wahoo, and overthrew its congregations? Who, will per- not, who would not permit his prisoners to return home? Some followed him, didn't they? Ezekiel 28 now. Let's look at Ezekiel 28. At verse number 13. You were in Eden. Now I'm telling you, uh, the king of Tyre was not in Eden. This is talking about Lucifer. You were in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was your covering. The carnelian, the topaz, the jasper, the chrysolite, the beryl, the onyx, the sapphire, the carbuncle, the emerald. Your settings and your sockets and engravings were brought were wrought in gold. And on the day that you were created, they were prepared. You were the anointed cherub. Satan is a cherub. He has wings. Cherubs have wings. There were cherub beam over the Ark of Mercy seat right here as you see this. These were cherubs here looking toward each other with their heads bowed and the wings toward each other. Those were cherubim or cherubim. You are the anointed cherub that covers the overshadowing wings that I set you so. You are upon the holy mountain or government of God. You walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire like paved work and gleaming sapphire stone upon which the God of Israel walked on Mount Sinai. You were blameless in your ways from the day you were created until you were iniquity and guilt was found. And you were blameless. He was perfect. The Nahash, the serpent in the book of Genesis was perfect, but he became Arum, it says. He became Arum, Haya Arum. He became evil, deceitful. God didn't create evil things. He does not create evil people. Evil does not come from God. Evil comes from volition. Until iniquity, sin, and guilt were found in you, through the abundance of your karma, you were filled with lawless and violence in you, sin, and therefore I cast you out, profane from the government of God. And the guardian cherub drove you out from the midst of the stones of fire. And your heart was proud and lifted up because of your beauty. Pride. The proud and the damned. The proud and the damned. You corrupted your wisdom for the sake of your splendor. I cast you to the ground. I lay you before the king that they might gaze upon you. You have profaned your sanctuary by the multitude of your sins and the enormity or the enormity of your guilt and by the unrighteousness of your trade therefore I brought fire forth a fire from your midst it has consumed you and have reduced you to ashes upon the earth in the sight of all who looked at you now in Matthew the 23rd chapter in the New Testament let's go there Matthew 23 now there are many religions that uh, that the Bible calls puffed up. You know, people that are saved by grace have no reason to, pro- to, bra- to brag at all, to be proud of anything. God saves you. He saves you. He convicted your sin of sin, righteousness, and judgment to come. You call upon Him. He saves your soul. But there are in many religions in the world today, you work your way to heaven. You work your way to heaven. In those religions, people are dressed up in in extreme finery in some of them, in priestly robes, acting like they're God the Son. In Matthew, the 23rd chapter, we had a religion here that God called out, but it had become corrupt. It had become damned and proudful. Proud and damned, the proud and the damned. Matthew, the 23rd chapter, then Jesus said to the multitudes and to his mothetes, his habitual learners, his church, by the way, the scribes and Pharisees sit in Moses' seat of authority. So, 
So observe and practice all they tell you to do, but do not do what they do. Or they preach, but do not practice. They tie up heavy loads, hard to bear, and place them upon men's shoulders, but they themselves will not lift a finger to help bear them. They do all their works to be seen of men. They make their wide phylacteries, their small cases, is what they are, enclosed and with scripture passages in them, and worn during prayer on the left arm. And make their fringes, and the fringes on their garments were had the lineage of the family. This is all pride. The proud, and Jesus calls them the damned, the proud and the damned. People today, Herbert Armstrong and his group, they were gods in embryo like Mormons. You know, Mormon, the Mormon priesthood, the apostles, they are the messengers of God. Because they are indeed gods in embryo, and they will rule kingdoms and worlds one of these days. Remember, Lucifer did that. Lucifer talked to the woman, and he says, uh, God won't kill you if you eat of that tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And first of all, it's the knowledge of good. Once they ate of it, they knew how good God was and how bad they were. That's the, that's the astounding thing. They saw how great God was when they ate of that. And they saw how damned they were. The proud and the damned. Oh, it'll make you, you'll be like gods, knowing good from evil. And she took of it. And she ate it, and she ate it, and she ate it, and she ate it in the imperfect tense. She didn't eat some of it. She ate all of it and gave to her husband. Now, on their fringes of the garments, they have their lineages, where they came from. Deuteronomy 6 and Exodus 13 and verse 9 and Numbers 13, uh, 15 and verse 38, where it talks about this. And they take pleasure in and thus love the place of honor at feast and the best seats in the synagogues, in the synagogue. By the way, the Jews said they spoke their language always. The word synagogue is Greek. If they had been speaking Greek or Hebrew, it would have been Moed, a place of gathering. And to be greeted with honor in the marketplaces and have people call them rabbi. But you are not to be called rabbi, teacher, for one is your teacher, and you are all brothers. The word rabbi there was doctor doctor of theology, the greatest of the learned ones. Do not call anyone in the, in, on earth your father, for you have one father who is in heaven. What happens with that in Catholicism? Father, father, padre, padre, father, father, bowing down to him. Bow down to no man. There is no mediator between man and God, between man and God except that person, Jesus Christ, our Savior and our God. And you must not be called masters, leaders, for you have one master and leader, that is Christ. He who is greatest among you, let him be your servant and your slave. Whoever exalts himself with haughtiness and empty pride shall be humbled and brought low. And whoever humbles himself, who has a modest opinion of himself and behaves according, shall be raised to honor. But woe to you, scribes, Pharisees, and hypocrites, and pretenders, because you shut the kingdom of heaven in men's faces, for you neither enter yourselves nor you allow those who are about to go into. Jesus tells the whole story here. Woe to you, scribes, Pharisees, pretenders, and hypocrites, for you swallow down, swallow up widows' houses and pretense to cover up and make long prayers. Therefore you will receive the greater condemnation than the heavier sentence. They were the judges in the synagogues. Judges and lawyers have a greater sentence upon a greater judgment than the common man. You lawyers and judges out there, better pay attention to this one. God will hold you double and triple accountable in this world if you are set up to be a judge over mankind. Make sure you're judging correctly. Woe to you, scribes, Pharisees, and hypocrites, for you travel over sea and land to make a single proselyte, and when he becomes a proselyte, you make him doubly a much a child of hell, a Gehenna, as you are. The lake of fire, that's right over here in the future. Sheol exists today, the place of the departed spirit, but those will be taken out at the great white throne judgment and thrown into Gehenna. And he says, you'll make them double times the child of hell as you are. Woe to you blind guides who say, if anyone swears by the sanctuary of the temple, 
It is nothing but if anyone swears by the gold of the sanctuary, he is a debtor, bound by his oath. You blind fool, for which is greater, the gold or the sanctuary of the temple that has made the gold sacred. And why was the sanctuary, the naos, the holy of holies, Kadesh HaKashim, why is that holy? Because of God himself and his presence. You too, whoever swears by the altar is not duty bound, but whosoever swears by the offering on the altar his oath is binding. You blind men, which is greater, the gift or the altar, which makes the gift sacred? Whosoever swears by the altar swears by it and by everything on it. And he who swears by the sanctuary of the temple swears by it and by him who dwells in it, the God of Israel. Whosoever swears by heaven and swears by the throne of God and by him who sits upon that throne of God, God himself, Jehovah. Woe to you, scribes, Pharisees, and hypocrites, for you give a tenth of your mint and your deal and your common and have neglected and committed the weightier, more important matters of the law, right and justice and mercy and fidelity. These you ought to particularly have done without neglecting the other things. They tithe out of their own family gardens, which is okay. That's, that's all right. You blind guides filtering out, straining out the gnat and swallowing down the camel. Gnats were unclean beings, but so was a camel. They could strain out the gnats out of the wine and out of the water so they wouldn't swallow anything unclean, but they gulped down a camel. That's a hyperbole. That's an exaggeration, but it's true. They swallowed down the more important things. You blind guides. Woe to you, scribes, Pharisees, pretenders, and hypocrites. You clean the outside of the cup of the platter, but within you are full of extortion, prey, spoil, plunder, grasping, self-indulgence, pride, and covetedness. You blind Pharisee, first clean the inside of the cup and of the plate so that the outside may be cleaned also. Woe to you, scribes, Pharisees, and pretenders, and hypocrites. You are like tombs that have been whitewashed which look beautiful on the outside, but inside are, are what we call filthy, dead men's bones and everything impure, corrupt. Just as you also outwardly seem to people to be just and upright, but inside you are full of pretense and outlaws and iniquity. Arum in Hebrew. Asel Woe to you, scribes, Pharisees, pretenders, and hypocrites, for you build tombs for the prophets and decorate the monuments of the righteous, saying, If we had lived in those days, our forefathers, we would not have aided them in shedding the blood of the righteous prophets. Thus you are testifying against yourselves that you are descendants of those who murdered and slandered and tortured the prophets. Fill up then the measure of your father's sins to the brim, that nothing may be wanting to a full measure. You serpents, you snakes, you nahash. That's the serpents. That's the one that Satan dwelled in. You spawn of vipers. You, you could, how can you escape the penalty to be suffered in hell, the damnation, the proud and the damned? Because of this, take notice, I am sending you prophets and wise men, interpreters and teachers and scribes, men learned in the Mosaic law and the prophets, some of them you will kill, even crucify. Why, Christ was crucified. Peter was crucified upside down. And some you will flog in your synagogues, and that's Paul. And pursue and persecute from town to town, so that upon your heads you may come all the blood of the righteous, those who corresponded to the divine standard of right, and shed on earth the blood of the righteous Abel. Cain did that. To the blood of Zechariah, the son of Zechariah, whom you murdered between the sanctuary and the prophet and the altar. Truly I declare unto you, these evil, calamitous times will come upon this generation. O Jerusalem, O Jerusalem, murdering the prophets and stoning those who are sent to you. How often I would have gathered your children together as a mother fowl gathers her brood under her wings, but you would not come. You would not come. You wish not. They would not come through their pride, through self-made religion. They would not come. 
You know, the only thing that ever gets you into heaven is the blood of Jesus Christ and Him alone. There is nothing in you that is good. Behold, your house is forsaken, desolate, abandoned, and left destitute of God's help. For I declare unto you, you will not see me again until you say, Baruch Hashem. Blessed be the name. Blessed and magnified and worshipped and adored and exalted be he who comes in the name of the Lord. The word Jehovah means who shall become. Jesus means Jehovah saves. Jesus is our Jehovah. God, John 1 and 1 says, In our king, in logos, kai logos, ain't pros, on theon. Kai logos, ain't theos. In the beginning, way back there before anything was ever created, kept on being the Jehovah, and the Jehovah kept on being a part of the Godhead because he kept on being God. John 1, 14 says, Kai logos, sarx, again, to, and the word that word there comes from the Greek word hadavar, which means the name or the, or the word. And when the Israel, after Exodus 20, verse 7, Thou shalt not use the Lord thy God's name in vain, for he shall require it of you, they would never speak the name of Jehovah, and they would say hadavar. So in the New Testament, when John wrote John 1 and 1, he said, The word, the Jehovah, in the beginning kept on being the Jehovah. And the Jehovah kept on being a separate part of Godhead, because Jehovah kept on being God. John 1, 14 says, And the Word, and the Word, flesh he became, and dwelt among us, and we beheld the glory, the glory of the only begotten God, the only begotten one from the Father. John 1, 18 says, No one has seen God at any time, the only begotten God, the one being in the bosom of the Father, that one has led himself out. The Bible tells us that we all have sinned. There is not one righteous. These people that we're talking about, all Muhammad wasn't righteous. Never, no pope was righteous. Garner Ted Armstrong, Herbert Armstrong was not righteous. Mary Baker Eddy was not righteous. All these people were not righteous. Only Jesus is righteous, and only we are righteous by His blood. For all have sinned and come short of the fallen short for all have gone astray and fallen short missed the mark of the glory of God well the wages of sin is death <clears throat> but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord <clears throat> God demonstrates his own love toward us in that while we were yet sinners Christ died for us God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, to whosoever believes in Him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Romans 10, 9 and 10 says that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised Him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Are you part of the proud and the damned? Are you on God's side? Are you one of those that have repented of your sins and called upon Him? Is there a time in your life when you ask God to forgive you of your sins and ask you to save your soul? Ask Him to save your soul. You can do that today. You can be the proud and the damned. I've seen people walk out of church damned and proud. Fall on your face wherever you are and ask God to save your soul. Ask him to forgive your sin. Are you part of the proud of the damned? Or are you part of the elect? Those that have chosen Jesus Christ as their Savior. Israel was the elect. And yet they were damned. The elect at that time chose not Jesus. God chose them. He will, he will use them in the millennium. But right now, they're the damned, the proud and the damned still to this very day. The tribulation period is going to have to bring them on their knees. Two-thirds of them are going to die. And then they will say, Baruch Hashem, blessed be the name. Blessed be the name of he that came in the Lord. Blessed be the one that came in the name of the Lord. And he'll look at that. they'll look at him and mourn as for a only begotten son. And they'll say, where did you get those wounds and in your feet and in your side? He said, in the house of my friends, and they will weep. Our Father, we send this message out today that it will glorify you in every way. Forgive us for we you. Help us to glorify you in our lives. For your sake, for your honor and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.